Hi, everyone. Welcome to Live with Genomi. It's Anne Hine, Embroidery Software Specialist for Genomi America. And I'm going to hang out here for just a moment as we wait for everyone to catch up. I see a few more people joining on. And I'm going to leave it here just so people can find it for just maybe a couple seconds more. And then I'll put the camera on. All right. I do have my comments up. So you're welcome to comment. It's great to see everyone. So let me go ahead and I'll get the camera on. There we go. Hi, everyone. So welcome. As I said, I'm Ann Hine, Embroidery Software Specialist for Genomi America. And today I have a really, oh, a really cute project, I think, for you guys. It's quick and easy. It's for any sewing machine from our uh, entry to our top of the line, you can do this. You can even do it on a serger of any kind. So that's a great thing. Um, I like having a project like that. So it's a, I call it a coin purse. It doesn't really have to be a coin purse. You can really put dollar bills in there if you want. You can put gift cards in there, your room card from your hotel, anything in these, and you can make them any size. I did one uh, for Kleenexes too as well. So you'll see all that. Before I go over to my camera and show you what they look like and explain how I make them, I did want to show you that on my CM17, I have the new um, thread holder back here. And it's a five thread holder. And you can't see, I do have a thread on there. Um, you can hold five threads back there. I normally have my lid up so you can't see this part, uh, but I have the lid down today so you can see that. What I like about it is way up here on the top, and I can't, I don't know if I can zoom in enough to show you, but there's these little slides and they slide over so that when you're ready to clip your thread and you're done, you can cut, slide it over to hold your thread, clip it and pull it out through the needle and it'll hold the tail. So your tail doesn't like uh, fall down behind your machine or fall into the flywheel. So I love that part of it. All my tails are up there so I can just quickly grab them. I'll try to move in close. I don't know if I can get in close enough for you to really see it at this vantage point, but I, you can kind of see them. See right there, those little, the little slide right here. You can slide it back and forth and it covers the hole where you put your thread as I yank the thread out of there. All right, so let's put this back to a normal picture here so we can see, there we go. All right, so anyways, I'm gonna put my camera on so you can see our project for today. Let me close this little window and get my camera. I have a bunch of them laying here and I'll explain all of them. Here we go. All right, and I do have my comments up, so I'm gonna check over to here to see what we have. Marty's here and Susan, welcome, welcome. So I started making these, I had to go to an event and this is from uh, the cosplay or the anime for Dragon Slayer. We have some of this fabric and I needed something to teach in a class. So I taught this little fold over coin purse like that. And then as I sat in the booth talking to people, selling machines, showing machines, I was making them. And if someone came by, especially wearing this from Dragon Slayer, wearing these, any of these prints, I would run up to them and give them to one of these or anybody who came by. So I made tons of them while I was in the booth. And they're very, very simple. Um, here's another one I made out of this kind of fabric here. Hi, Pat. Nice to see you. This one here is a little fancy. I did put a cam snap in there. If I can unsnap it. These are really tight cam snaps. There we go. So I put a little cam snap, which I think is great. So you can put a little cam snap. You could put a button in a buttonhole if you want to be that that busy. But this was made with a, um, a, a piece of quilting, a quilt. Actually, I didn't quilt it yet. It was extra piece of um, a quilt that I cut up. Um, I cr and then I cut it on the angle because if I just, it's very, um, you know, rectangular. So I just thought it would be boring if I didn't. So I cut on an angle and I made uh, actually two of these, you can see here. One is bigger than the other. So you can make them different sizes and I'll talk about that. And then I made this one here. This is made out of um, silk that they use to make kimonos. So I have some, some of that, I had quite a bit of this. So I've cut that up and then I made one a little bit differently and it has where the fold, I made it in the center and then I put my tissues in here so I can pull out a tissue. You know, if I'm traveling, I have a tissue I could pull out. You know, they don't make those tissues very much that come out of the center, the uh, ones that you can carry in your 
in your purse. A lot of these are from the top, but I just opened the whole package. I opened my package up from the, from the front and then I could just pull out what I need. So I like that. So these are fancy. You can pop these in. These make great little gifts. If you're going somewhere, you can always make a great little gift. I did box the corners on this and Miriam gave us a beautiful uh, video on that last week on how to box corners. So you can definitely box your corners to make yours more square like this on the corners. Very easy to do. Let me pop this out of here and I can show you my corners. Danielle is here and I haven't trimmed. So see on my corner, uh, you kind of squish your corner down and then you stitch across it. And then you make sure you measure them all the same so they come out even. I'll hold this down here so you can see. So they're pretty easy to do. Now my trick, I didn't do it on this one. Typically what I do when I do a box corner, I don't know if Miriam does that. I will start in the center and go to the one end and then I'll go all the way back to this side and then back up. That way I don't have these tails right, right here because this here, my box is gonna come apart right there. So I always start in the center, back up, come back here, go forward and back up again. So my uh, start and stop is in the center here, much safer than on where the fold is. But this is a little thing. So that was the one that holds the, um, the tissues and I'll just fold these back in. So let me show you how I created them. And I did use um, on some of these earlier ones, some of these I might have used my serger and um, some of them I just used the over edge stitch. And I'm gonna show you the over edge stitch and using your M foot, which I have right here in just a moment. So what you do is you're going to cut a piece, a strip of fabric. And I use, um, this is like six wide by 15 long. And then my bigger one, I actually, I didn't show you this one. This is a leftover piece of embroidery I brought home from a show and I cut it up and used it for my, and I strategically cut it so that I could have this match here. And that's fine that that's not matching there, but I did want this part to match. Um, so you can use your leftover embroidery pieces as well for this. This one is larger. This one, I believe I did um, maybe seven inches by um, 18, something like that. So it's a little bit, it's a bit bigger. And if I check here, what might've been a total six by 18, this might be a five. Yep, this is five by 15, this is six by 18. All right, so you can play around. You can make them any size you want, really. So you have your strip like this, and then you're gonna fold it right sides together. And right here, you're going to seam it. So it'll look like this. I'll bring that up. So you can kind of see where I've used the over edge stitch. Now I have a better sample of the over edge stitch so you can see that. And that is over here. And if you're not familiar with the over edge stitch, let me see how everybody's doing out here. Perfect. All right, so here's the over edge stitch. Can you see in my sample here? All right, so what it does is you use your M foot and your M foot sits on your fabric, like kind of like that. And there's some little wires on your M foot. And we'll see that in just a moment. I have a better way to show you. And as it stitches, the it puts the, the uh, V part of your uh, over edge stitch over the wires and then they slide off the back because the wires aren't connected in the back. And as you go along, you get your seam and your finished edge. So if you don't have a serger, you can use this. Now on this one, I started with, let me see if I have it going the right way. I did, um, one of these I started with the basic one, I think it's number 15 on my machine. And then I went to one that had a, a doubled up edge up here so you can finish off your edges more. So you can make your things look as nice on the inside as on the outside. And then you don't have to have a serger, but you, this is very simple and quick to do in a serger. You could, you could like chain piece these like crazy. So after you've sewn that, what you're going to do, you are going to open this back out. And then I like to press it. I do a finger press when I'm in a hurry. Uh, if I have time, I will press it at the iron. And then I'm gonna put it like this. So my, there's my seam and I'm gonna flip it over like that. I want the seam, I don't wanna see the seam. 
and you won't see the seam. Do you see a seam on any of these? There's no seam. There's no seam. There's no seam. And look how neat these line up. You can get them to line up really well. So once you get it like this, this is where you're going to make that little fold. So the first, this one is the little fold is the first one you make. So you would fold this down like that. And however big you want that flap, that's the flap. The flap goes first. And so you can put uh, little clips there to hold it if you want. I have some clips here. So you can clip this like so for a moment to hold that. And then you're going to bring the bottom up like this and overlap it, you know, about a quarter inch or more, depending on what you want to do. And then you can move your clip so you have all of it on there like so. So you have this kind of thing. And then you're just going to sew the sides with your over edge stitch and you're done. So here's one where I've stitched the sides. And you can see, just let me hold it this way because this is the way I was doing it. So there's my, my flap up under there. There's that part. You don't see the seam. When I look in here, I, there's a seam in there. Then you can just turn it. And I like to fold my little corners in so I get a nice sharp corner. And you can use your point turner afterwards to get those nice and sharp. Don't use anything too pointy because you end up poking a hole in there. So you turn all your corners. Now, as I was making these, you know how you start on a project and then your head goes in like a zillion places. That's what was happening with me. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I can use the Mirage stitches in my machine. I can use decorative stitches. I could take this to the Girl Scout troop that I help sometimes. They could stitch on the fabric and then we could flip them into this and they could make these very quickly in, a, in an afternoon. That's a really quick thing. They can learn how you can draw lines on their fabric so they can stitch straight, those kind of things. So you can do a lot of things with this. If you like to stitch out your decorative stitches, cut some fabrics and then do your decorative stitching and then turn them into these cute little wallets. And then of course, once you get done, you can always add a snap if you want to. So, you know, I don't want to steal anything from Kimberly Imo, but this is a done before dinner right here. So I hope everybody you know, can do these. You can any size width you want by the length. And you have to play around. Some of these, when you use a, depending on how big you make this flap, um, is depending on how big they come out. These were, these might be um, four by, let me see what this one is. This is like a, a four and a half or so, um, probably by uh, eight or 12, something like that, depending on your length of it makes this portion of it your width is set to whatever you use a lot of times i just use my ruler at six by 18 that makes a nice cut this one here i had to fussy cut a little bit so i worked with fussy cutting so making sure i had the pieces that i wanted and then you can play around with how much the fold how much over your fold is and there you have your little piece a great little giveaway if you're traveling somewhere with a group this would be a great gift to give to your group and you could put maybe a little note in there with your email address so that you could keep track um, of your friends while you're on a trip. Okay, so let me show you the over edge stitch up close. And I wasn't going to do it on the machine. What I wanted to show you is I have the um, AccuAssist app. Some of you have that app. Anybody can, use, anybody can open and use this app. It doesn't have to. It's, I'm using it on my Android. And I don't have to hook it to my machine um, if I don't want to. I can still find different things in here. So what I did is I touched up in that top corner. Let me get over here. We have AccuAssist and AccuSpark and AccuSpark 2. But if you go over here, I can look at these different headings. And I want to look at the stitch chart info. This is why I say anybody can use that. So this shows my utility stitches my buttonhole stitches. When I come down here on the bottom, I can see decorative. And then it has all the decorative groupings for this machine. It won't have your machine, but you can kind of see what some of them look like. And then of course, there's the special mirage and tapering on this machine. But under utility, what I wanted to look at was overcasting right here. 
So when you come into overcasting, it shows you uh, the different stitches that are for overcasting and how to use them. So an overcasting is an over edge stitch and you can see that the stitch and the M foot, we'll go to that screen in just a minute. And then when you touch over edge, it tells you how to sew with that. And um, when fabric is stretched, it's hard to sew. If you're using a stretch fabric and how you trim visible hemming and things like that. So it gives you some tips and pointers on using this foot right there. So if we go over to the uh, stitch cat, no, let me go back here to my over edge and I'm going to hang on a second. There we go. So when I go here, you can't really see the little uh, pieces on there, but this, our, my machine has different stitches. This one is, could be used for a knit for over edge. There's the double over edge. So that means it has extra stitches over the seam. There's an overlock stitch. So if you wanted it to look like your serger, without it being a serger, you would do that. And then we have the overlock stitch, another overlock stitch. And a this is a knit visual stitch. It's not really an over edge because you're not using your over edge foot there. And there's an and then you're back to my overcasting stitches. So I can't get that to be. Let me see if I try this one. Oops, let me get off of there. There we go. So there you can see the stitch and where my foot would sit is like this. I'm going to lay my foot on here so you can see. So your foot would sit like this. Let me make it a little smaller. And those red lines would be going over my wires. And it would be making that seam as I go along. When I flip this over, you can see, let me find a spot where we can put this so you can see the wires on the back. It's hard to see them in this light. A foot is hard to keep the glare off of, but there are some little wires along here. And when you set it up correctly, your machine is not going to hit you, know, you can see the little divot right here. That's where your needle goes on the side. And it will stitch and, and pop out here and make a stitch and go back, pop out and make a stitch. So the extra thread is pulled over those wires and they slide off the back of your machine. So it's really a great foot. I use it a lot when I don't want to pull down my serger. And if I'm doing something like this, um, the tissue ones, I'll, let me take a look at that one in a minute. So that's the over edge foot. I think it's a stitch we forget we have. And, it, you know, you can use it in this type of a project. You can use it in your clothing. If you don't have a serger, it's a great way to clean up the inside of your uh, garment as well. All right. So the one that is the tissue, let me open it up and I'll give you a quick measure. I think, I, you know, it depends on your package too. See, this is the package I had like this and it's very thick. That makes a difference in how big you're going to make it. And then I just slit this with my seam ripper so that I could, I was going to take them all out of here and just stick them in there, but I think I'm going to keep them in the little plastic. So let's look at how wide I went. Let's see here. I'm going to measure that. So my width for this one was six inches. So I probably went, I probably, I, maybe I went to, um, well, it's hard to say this way. Let's see. Three. I might've went to 15 on this. You would have to play around with um, how big, like six, the, the length of it makes those fold overs. So what you could do is I would cut it larger, maybe you know start with an 18, um, you could sew it together and then flip it like this to see if it's not, if it's too much, take it, don't, don't do the ends, take it back and then just you know pull this out and trim it like this. Let me get the first one. So say I was putting this, my tissues in here, and let's say this was big enough. And I'm like, oh, good. If it was too big, I could just open this back up, come in here to this seam, and adjust this seam first. And then I could work on the others. And you can see this is my small one. This isn't going to fit. So you got you to gotta play around with your strips and figure out what's going to fit to give yourself room on the edges. So you might wanna go six or seven inches wide, and then you can always adjust that as you go. 
that makes it really easy to work with any, I don't, I, there isn't like a standard tissue package size anymore. All right, let's see what else is happening here. Everybody looks good. All right, I think that's everything. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Cam Snaps. So this is the um, Cam Snap uh, tool. And these are what the Cam Snaps look like. They come in plastic. These are little plastic ones. And this is like the, that would be the front or the back cover. And that goes through your fabric. So you would, let's just pretend here. You would put it through your fabric like this. So it's going to stick through. And then you would add either the male or female end. And there's the two different ones. There's this one here where your, um, it looks like a little belly button. You would, that, that would go on one side. And then on this side, you would put your other one. So it would look like. Where's my little sample? Let me get my sample open. So here I have the outer part. And this is, I think this is the female end. And then you have your uh, other one I did in a different color right there. And when you want to put them in the little holder here to squish them, you slide it in like this. So the, the bottom, the front part is going to be in the little piece. And then you just squeeze down hard. Now they make other ones of these. Um, I, this one, I don't do a very heavy ones, so I can squeeze this without a problem. They do make metal metal uh, cam snaps too. These are not, probably knockoff cam snaps, but they make metal ones and and bigger ones so that you can put them in diff, uh, like denim and things like that. And they make up one that you push down. It's a freestanding one, which is really nice. That's probably what I'll upgrade to at one time. But I couldn't resist this little floral one to add to my tools. You know, we always need tools in our toolbox. All right, so I think that's everything. So the name of the app is AccuAssist, and I'm gonna put the camera back on here and we'll go over that. Here we go. So the app is called um, AccuAssist, and it, it is for our CM17, and you can hook up to the machine. And you know, when I found the stitch I wanted, I could it said send. I could send it right to my machine and it would set my machine up for that. So the AccuAssist app works that way. We have AccuSpark for the M7, and then we just came out with AccuSpark 2, which is a bit combination of Ac AccuAssist and AccuSpark original. They put them together and those will work on the, the new M8 and uh, the M8 series, M8, M6, and the 9480 and the 9410. They have a QR code, so you can pull a stitch up, take a picture of the QR code, and it'll bring up your stitch information. Then there's other ways to search and look at all your, it's like a little manual in your hand. And I, I love that. I mean, I who, who doesn't sit, who doesn't have their, their uh, phone right by their machine most of the time? And if you go find your manual, it's, you know, paper, it's big. You might wanna look something up really quick. Just go to your AccuSpark or your AccuAssist app. Even if you don't have this machine, you can look up different things and it will help you. Our, almost every one of our machines has, you know, very similar, they might not have the range of stitches that our top of the line has, but you would probably have one over edge stitch so you can see about an over edge stitch and how to use it and what foot it goes with. So there you have it. All right, I think that's everything for today. Join me again tomorrow, I'll be here again and um, I'm doing our zip pouch of the month for August and it's back to school. So I've devised something we can use as a back to school uh, gift or something we can give to our children or, or whatever. My kids are all grown. So I'm excited about back to school stuff. And you know, they're, maybe they would like to go back to school now after having jobs and having to get you know, work nine to five, that kind of stuff. So we all know how that is. So join me tomorrow. Tomorrow's an artistic digitizer project. So we, I will have uh, stuff to show you for the machine, but we are doing a new zip pouch. It's going to be a back to school one for all those little back to school supplies that you have. All right, everyone, have a great day and we'll see you again soon. Thank you for joining me.